the intelligence community is trying to do is they're trying to investigate specifically ISIL's claim of responsibility. Uh, and that involves more than just authenticating uh, that the claim published yesterday originated from ISIL. White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest attempting to dismiss claims that ISIS was behind Sunday's attempted attack in Garland, Texas. As Newsmax Prime continues, we should note that while our government tries to determine if ISIS is indeed responsible for that attempted attack, there is new fear that the modern Islamic Caliphate is closer to carrying out an attack here in our country after a known terror recruiter sent out an ominous tweet saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. Joining us now, the Dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, Rabbi Marvin Heyer. Rabbi Heyer joins us via Skype from Los Angeles. And Rabbi, welcome to Newsmax Prime. It's a pleasure. Now, Rabbi, Twitter seems to be the main method used by ISIS to communicate with their supporters. But with Twitter previously suspending 2,000 ISIS link accounts per week in recent months, is stopping ISIS from using social media virtually impossible? Well, it may be very difficult, but I think it's our responsibility to do everything in our power to make sure that their influence is limited. Uh, you know, we would not permit Twitter. Somebody will say on Twitter, I'm looking to hire a gunman to kill somebody. And we have to understand that the threat of the 21st century is terrorism. And that ISIS is one of the, I wouldn't say center field, that's occupied by Iran, but one of the principal sponsors of international terrorism. And as a result, we should take every precaution to shut them down. Of the social media, you have Twitter, Facebook, other vehicles to get people together. Have you been pleased with the response? Have these various social media sites been cooperative with you? Well, some have been more cooperative than others. Let me put it this way. There's a lot more work to be done. This is new for all of us, but let's make no mistake about it. The influence of social media is enormous. It's very good. We all believe in freedom of speech. And nobody wants to shut down freedom of speech. But we surely want to shut down terrorists and murderers. We should make no excuses for them and do everything to make it more difficult for them. And as we discuss the marvels of the Internet and, quite frankly, some of the pitfalls of social media, it is worth noting, Rabbi, what is past is prologue. Seventy years ago, World War II brought two groups together in a celebration, American soldiers and Jewish prisoners. Let's listen as a former American soldier remembers the day he helped liberate the Dachau concentration camp. It was a terrible shock to see how much you, the survivors, had suffered from starvation, disease, brutality, and freezing conditions, and to learn that 31,000 had died here earlier. History reminds us that more than 200,000 people were being held in that camp when it was liberated. From 70 years looking back, what lessons should we take away from Dachau and the liberation of the concentration camps? The lessons we should take away is not to repeat our mistakes. Mistakes on two fronts. First of all, the State Department learned about the extermination of Jews in 1942. From 42 to 45, we didn't do the right thing by bombing the tracks to the camps. We could have saved millions. Now the other mistake, the 1930s, the appeasement movement, the, even the editors of the Times of London joining the appeasers of Chamberlain, Baldwin, Churchill was isolated in the 30s. As Churchill said in 1946, uh, if we would have taken on Nazi Germany in the early years, 50 million lives would have been saved and there would not have been a Nazi Holocaust. Learning from our mistakes today would mean when the Ayatollah says he wants to destroy the state of Israel, don't make any excuses for him. Believe him. 
That's what he really wants to do. When his top revolutionary general says that such a policy is irrevocable. In other words, they're committed irrevocably to destroy Israel. Believe him. Let's not be naive when we negotiate with the Iranians. When we negotiate with Iran, let's remember today they are the principal terrorists in the world. So let's be tough wherever we can. And, and the idea that at the end of 10 years that we're going to trust the Ayatollah that somehow after 10 years and after making hundreds of millions and billions of dollars because the sanctions will be off, the Ayatollah somehow will become a moderate. And that is we purpose. understand your concerns. Rabbi Marvin Heyer, we thank you for your time and we'll be right back.